Whether you're a day one Warriors fan or a new supporter, safe to say the anticipation ahead of this season is the highest it's been in a long time. With pre-season training in full swing, the club is also looking to capitalise on the Up The Wars movement with potential hospitality options too. One New Zealand Warriors CEO, Cameron George, joins us for more on this this morning. Thanks for being with us, Cam. Good morning. Now, the weight of expectation this year is, I guess, a little higher than previous years just because of how successful last year was. How does the team manage that? And has that been part of the pre-season training? Yeah, look, ac across the organisation, you know, we understand there's a level of expectation there, but this is what we want. This is where we want to be. Um, you know, the successful clubs in the past have had to live with it. Um, you know, we train for this, we prepare for this, and we now have to go out and execute it with the expectation that um, our fans want us to win, and we want to win. So it, it's quite an exciting time. Um, you know, for a few years now, we've had to work out how, um, you know, ways we're going to win and win back our fans, but we've got them now. Now we've got to retain them by being the best we can be. You've also got some um, big names coming back into the squad and Roger tuivasa Shek and Chanel Harris-Tavita. Can you tell us more about what role they, they will play and the potential impact on the team? Oh, look, we will explain that at some stage um, in the near future, but, you know, you'll see it unfold amongst the trial games over the next month. But, look, the impact they've had on the squad, the club, um, has been huge, and that's exactly why we're very happy to have them back at our footy club, both of them are very professional. They raise the standards. They expect, you know, high outcomes uh, in everything they do. So, um, you know, they, they've had a really positive impact on the club amongst the whole group with Kirk Catewell and everyone else. So we're all very hungry this year to back it up and be better. Yeah, uh, I noticed that you were at the airport, which got me thinking that maybe you were going to Aussie for a few more you know, secret signings. Um, you mentioned Kurt Capewell there. Uh, do we, could we expect any sort of uh, other surprises in the wings? Oh, you never know, Nikki. Um, you're very sharp. I am at the airport, but um, I'll let you know in a few weeks or a week's time what I'm doing over in Australia. Ah, so that's not a no then. You never know. <laughs> You've obviously, um, I mean, Kurt's going to bring a lot of uh, wealth and knowledge and add to that squad. I mean, he's had a considerable amount of experience with the Panthers and the Broncos. What are you expecting he's going to bring to the squad? Yeah, the same. Um, we're going through a bit of a transition period, Nikki, where whereby we've got a lot of kids coming through our system now, which is what we want to be, a development club, and mixing them up with experience and winning players like Kurt Cope. Well, you know, the two clubs you'd mentioned, both the premiership winning clubs at Cronulla. He was there, he was at Penrith, and he was in the grand final last year, the Broncos. So he knows what is expected. Um, so, you know, he's going to be great for our young kids coming through as well as the NRL team. Cam, um, Lloyd here. I just want to ask about the hospitality headquarters or the zones. What, what exactly are they? Are they sort of bars? Are they fan zones? And where in the country are they going to be? Uh, look, we're still working through that. Um, it's just a bit of a business model shift that... We're too reliant on the NRL and, and what they provide us. And um, at the end of the day, uh, we want to diversify our business and revenue streams. So we're working with partners throughout the country. Uh, we want to identify a number of you know locations where Warriors fans and new Warriors fans can all get together and celebrate and cheer on together. So, um, yeah, we're just working through that now and we're very excited about possibly what that could look like. Would that be in a number of cities? Because the exciting thing this year, of course, with the first um, pre-season game is that you're going to Christchurch on the 18th of February. So would you be looking at, at having hospitality options around the country? Yeah, that's right, um, Melissa. So actually Christchurch is a priority to us. Uh, we're there for the next three years and um, you know we're, we're working with some partners now about what that could look like. And you know we just want to partner up with a great uh, establishment in Christchurch and have everyone enjoy the ride with us over the next couple of years. I tell you what, that will be music to the ears of a viewer who's written in called Kane Dodd. Thanks for writing in, Kane. He says he doesn't get to go to games often because he lives in Invercargill, but he does travel up to Auckland as often as he can and over to Aussie. Um, but, Cam, I just want to read to you one uh, other little bit of feedback this morning. I know you must get these stories all the time. Um, but this is from Diane, who says that her 13-year-old great-grandson from Otane in Central Hawke's Bay has been 
him saving his pocket money to go to a game at the end of July. He's found accommodation, he's talked his dad into taking him and now they're just waiting for the tickets to go on sale. He's a great supporter of the Warriors. You must get stories like that all the time. How much does that mean to you and how much does it mean to the team? Oh, it's everything to us. We, we play for New Zealand. We play for our fans. Without the fans, we're not the club um, that we want to be. And, um, you know, this year, the impact we saw on the whole country, and if not globally, uh, our footy team can have and our footy club can have in the community is so inspiring. And, you know, hear stories like that is just, it's, uh, you know, so they're just beautiful messages. And, you know, I'll... Um, yeah, hopefully I get to meet the young fella and, um, you know, we can look after him because that's a that's a big effort and we just love having that impact on people's lives in a positive way and um, we try and do the best we can. That's cool. I think that's why so many people are behind the team as well this year. Also, best of luck for the Halbergs. That's coming up on the 14th, the nomination for Team of the Year. What kind of impact does that have on you and, you know, would that win give you some kind of momentum amongst the team? Have you talked about it? Yeah, look, we were so privileged to be in this situation. Um, we don't take it for granted, but to be a finalist in those categories of moment of the year and team of the year, and when you look historically who have won those, um, it's just a real privilege for our footy club um, to be amongst that. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, um, we get the nod that night and, and we can, um, you know, we can celebrate that moment and uh, understand that, you know, we can be up there with the best of the best, and we want to stay there. So, it's a real privilege, and we're looking forward to that occasion. Okay, we don't want to um, let you miss that flight to Aussie, which sounds like it could be quite an important <laughs> little trip there with some meetings you've got going on. Uh, thank you very much for your time, One New Zealand Warriors CEO Cameron George.